Chris McIntyre, the director of Tilt Brass, and I'm here on video chat with my good friend Phil Niblock. We are playing Phil's piece, Exploratory, um, at Pioneer Works on October 12th, and thought it would be good to just hear a little bit about that piece and things in general from Phil especially given that it is his birthday and um, you know it's an auspicious day it's also Gandhi's birthday <clears throat> which is a big special day in India and it's also my mom's birthday so it's October 2nd is always a very nice day for oh, me personally it, um, it's, it's Groucho Marx too that I did not know that mm. that is actually kind of perfect <laughs> um, so uh, first of all, you know, let's just quickly, not, not that it's the most important aspect of this piece by any stretch, but um, let's just take a look at the score together for a second. Um, I know that this was actually made by a colleague. Um, talk about that, how that came about, or um, just anything you want to say about the, the um, creation of the score itself. Well, I... Uh... <clears throat> I generally talk to D.D. Vieira about uh, a chord to use and maybe what what progresses across the piece. Uh, we switch from one chord to another chord. And then uh, we pick a way to go from one to the other. Uh, generally, that's fairly obvious uh, yeah. to Guy. And so he makes the score. Yeah. Uh, so my involvement is uh, deciding what that chord is going to be. Yeah. And it's, it seems like um, I it to, it seems that there's a difference, like there's a change between how works in the past that I'm familiar with, like the really older works, stuff from the '70s and, and '80s that I'm familiar with. Um, these piece, this piece, and I feel like other more recent ones travel more than those pieces did. Like they, they kind of they go from one thing to the next a little bit. Is that fair to say? I mean, across the uh, time of the score. Yeah. About, yeah. Yes. It, that all depends too, because when I'm making pieces, say in Pro Tools, uh, say with a single instrument. Uh, frequently they they travel too, but sometimes they don't. Sometimes they just stick in one place. And really, what you hear is very much uh, uh, what happens at any moment, where where the uh, pitch bends and the, and the notes which are there <coughs> uh, change from from moment to moment. Yeah. So it seems like you're hearing the same sound, but really, there's an incredible variety of what's going on in that sound if you listen to it right so the psychoacoustic experience of it yeah is different but, than what's actually happening in yeah. the in the uh, in the sounds themselves well no the sounds themselves are really changing all the time it's just that it sounds like sort of one note and so you don't uh think about it that that change but right or or if you're unless you're really listening and then you and 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 you understand all these microtones and uh, yeah what's happening harmonically you see that it's, it's just constantly shifting uh yeah because exploratory seems like there it's a really audible from one thing to the next thing after mm -hmm. i mean over the whole scope of the piece i mean mm -hmm. i had to you know like you don't you're not going to know that as a listener until it happens like you don't mm -hmm. it's, it's really mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. subtle um, but it's there, um, and it's but it's really satisfying. Is is I guess why I'm even asking about it because it it's 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 a it's a um, mm -hmm. as a player even like when that when that kind of settles in and you feel it, um, it's it's really very satisfying. So mm. Mm. Um, yeah, thank you. That's very yes. very interesting. Because we did this, and and this will segue a little bit. Um, so tilt brass is one of a series of people of groups that are making versions of this particular piece there's one recording that's already out um three different versions um and um there are more planned so 
Many uh, more plants. Yes. There's about 25 altogether. Story, That's actually. incredible. <clears throat> uh, is this... I think, a, I think it's really incredible. Wow. Yeah. Must be <clears throat> pretty gratifying that so many folks are jumping into the fray yeah, here yeah. to make it happen. Um, what is the experience of this like for you right now? I mean, you're, so you've heard, I know that you haven't heard everything, of course, and I know that there's things happening that make it more difficult, but I mean, maybe even just personally, the experience of all of this activity around this one piece and kind of conceptually, if you have any kind of conceptual thoughts about it. I uh, farmed this out to a number of people and just got an amazing response. And then suddenly they were recordings. I mean, they were actually doing it. Yeah. And so there are all these recordings. And then we hassled a little bit about how the recordings might be improved. I think one of the problems was that uh, when you have t the, the, the 20 tracks, it, it, things get a bit muddy so that it all sounds pretty much the same. Uh, and that's very interesting is what you said about uh, the fact that you the people felt that there was a lot of change within the score, you know, and the length of the score. Yeah. Uh, and that they could hear those things uh, as they went by. Well, at least for me personally, <laughs> was... there's a there's an actual, I mean, it really does go from, there, there's sort of different pitch centers almost. I know that's not really how you think about it, but there mm -hmm. is a, a larger kind of almost structural change in a, in a way that I haven't experienced in your work in the past. And mm -hmm. um, not that it wasn't there for you or that it wasn't part of the concept of other pieces, but, but because I'm was involved in a more kind of, you know, like right up at the, the front end of the process, rather than just adding my sound to something that someone else made, it was it, it maybe I was able to perceive that in a different way as well. Mm -hmm. um, well, we are very excited to put this into a space. Um, there's going to be 11 brass players and playing along with our recording of the track. Mm -hmm. um, our recording will come out when is still being dealt with, but it's but it's going to come out uh, will be part of a, a, another set of pieces. And it's all very exciting. Um, and um, I and I'm sure anyone who sees this will be wishing you a very happy birthday. Mm. <laughs> we uh, uh, 89, correct? 89, 89. You know, that 88 was a, a, a glorious year because the Chinese think that uh, eight is the, is the great number. Oh. And 88 is even greater. But 89, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? We're about to find Maybe out. We're, we're on the shelf to the uh, to oblivion. Who knows? Who knows? Well, that seems correct in any case, either in 89 or, 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 or otherwise. <laughs> With that, adieu.